let us continue our discussion and try to figure out the motivation behind using that particular log barrier function. So I think the, the part that it is interior path and interior point method that is clear. But why did we use the log barrier function? If you, so if you remember the x star of t is given by arg min over x t f naught of x minus summation over i from 1 to m log of minus fi of x. So that was the objective function at each t and t increased by several factor of 10 or 20 at each iteration. So let's write down the optimality condition for this problem. Note that this problem is a convex problem because log of minus fi of x for a convex function is actually also a convex function. So if we differentiate it with respect to t, we would obtain and substitute x star of t instead of x, we would obtain t gradient of f naught x star of t plus summation over i from 1 to m 1 divided by minus f i of x star of t I am writing it minus in the new denominator because minus f i is positive times gradient of f i of x star of t right so this is equal to 0 is the optimality condition for x star of t now keeping this aside keeping the optimality condition aside let us write down the KKT conditions for the original problem and for this uh, x star of t. Our claim is that x star of t satisfies the KKT conditions for the original problem. So not only does it satisfy the KKT conditions for this problem, it also satisfies the KKT conditions for the original problem, albeit approximately. And that approximation will be small or approximation error will be small when t is large. So approximately it will satisfy. And uh, to see that all we need to do is let's uh, denote this quantity by lambda i star of t and uh, write down the KKT conditions for the original problem. So let's say that the KKT conditions for the original problem are what? If you remember they are the primal feasibility fi of x star is less than equal to 0 i equal to 1 to m dual feasibility lambda i star is greater than equal to 0 i equal to 1 to m then we have the complementary slackness so lambda i star f i of x star equal to 0 this is the complementary slackness i equal to 1 to m and then finally we have the first order condition because it is an unconstrained problem so gradient f naught of x star plus summation of lambda i star gradient f i of x star equal to 0. So this i equal to 1 to m. So this is the uh, first order condition. Now corresponding to these, let's see if x i star of t satisfies them or not. So first of all, we can see that f i of x star of t is indeed less than equal to 0 because it is feasible it is in fact a feasible method for the throughout the iterations x star of t remains feasible that part is fine now for the second condition which was dual feasibility instead of lambda i star we will actually use lambda i star of t which is given by minus 1 over t times f i of x star of t so minus 1 over t times fi of x star of t. Uh, maybe I should write that this is t times lambda i star of t. So we define it like this. Now fi of x star of t is negative. So this quantity is greater than equal to 0. So second condition is also satisfied. For the third condition, the complementary slackness, we can see that lambda i star of t times fi of x star of t this is not equal to 0. So third condition is not actually satisfied and instead we get it as minus 1 over t. So this is approximately satisfied. We could say that if t is large then this is approximately satisfied. Then what about the fourth condition? The fourth condition is obviously satisfied from the 
this condition optimality condition that we wrote down and uh, we just have to divide it by t and to see th then we would obtain gradient f naught of x star of t plus summation i from 1 to m lambda i star of t times gradient f i of x star of t equal to 0. So the first order condition also holds with this definition of lambda i star and x star. So the only thing that is not holding is the complementary slackness and that too is, e is not equal to 0 but it is small when t is large. Right? So this is the difference between the original problem and x star of t problem. Right? And as we increase t, the complementary slackness condition becomes truer and truer because it goes to 0. And therefore we can imagine that x star of t tends to x star. x star of t goes to x star. Right? So we are approaching the optimum. And in fact this kind of characterization also allows us to uh, determine the duality gap or bound the duality gap. So what is the duality gap? You can see that the primal optimum is f naught of x star of t at the tth iteration, right? And the dual optimum at the tth iteration is the dual function calculated at lambda star of t, right? So g is the dual function calculated at lambda star of t, which is which is less than or equal to the Lagrangian at x star of t comma lambda star of t right and which can be written as f naught of x star of t plus summation over i from 1 to m lambda i star of t f i of x star of t and we have already seen that this quantity was 1 over t right this quantity was minus 1 over t so this is equal to pt minus m over t m is the number of constraints 1 over t minus 1 over t was this lambda i star fi of x star of t for each i so in other words we can see that pt minus dt right pt minus dt is greater than equal to m by t so the duality gap is greater than equal to m by t and essentially we are saying that the lower bound on the duality gap goes to zero as t tends to uh, infinity. So as t tends to infinity, lower bound goes to zero. Right? So this is a very useful characterization of the uh, duality gap and the duality and the link with the duality and KKT conditions of the original problem. And this is what uh, partly motivates the log barrier function and in fact the log barrier function has several other properties as well which allow us to prove the convergence so here we have informally proved it we have said that the complementary slackness condition becomes uh, more and more accurate but actually it is possible to prove it properly also and uh, the duality gap in particular you can show that duality gap decreases as 1 over t with t increasing so you can just monitor, if you know t and m, then you can just monitor m over t and you would know how far you are from the uh, optimum because at the optimum the duality gap is zero because we are talking about convex problems. Right? So this is the theory behind the interior point method.